In this video, I want to talk a little bit about picking a journalistic niche and how we find stories in uh, journalism of all sorts, including digital journalism. So let's get started by talking about what it is we mean when we say niche. What's a niche? Well, a niche is just an area of specialization or a narrowing of your focus as a journalist. So uh, sometimes you may have heard the expression, you know, you can't see the forest for the trees, which is they're saying, you know, you need to look a little broader and not look so, you know, have tunnel vision quite so much. Well, in, in niche journalism, we kind of do the opposite. We, we specifically focus in on the trees instead of the forest. We look, you know, we're not looking for all kinds of vegetation and all kinds of trees in the forest. We're focusing specifically on oak trees or specifically on different types of ferns or whatever it is. And that's going to be our area of specialization as a journalist. So in journalism, these niches could take just an infinite number of forms. You could focus on local politics. You could focus on um, science. You could focus on video games and gaming. Or you could focus on, you know, the, the focus on the media and <laughs> and how the media works. You could be a, that could be your niche. Uh, you know, focus on just about anything. Uh, and so we're narrowing. And so that means we're not covering all things. We're not trying to to keep our eye on everything, we're focusing specifically on one little thing. So that's what we mean by niche in journalism. You're, you're, you're picking out or kind of finding that area of specialization and narrowing your focus to that and writing about those things, reporting about those things, specifically paying attention to things within that, that world, so to speak. Okay? So that's what we mean by niche. So what's the difference, you know, the kind of the advantages and disadvantages of being a generalist versus a specialist and having a niche? A specialist is somebody who would have a specific niche that they report on or that they're involved in, as opposed to a generalist who just goes everywhere. So the generalist, again, can write on any topic and for any platform, so they can write on anything that they find of interest in the world. Right? They're not limited to, to one area or another, uh, and they can write on anything of interest in the, in the world that they, the, they want to, which is great, uh, but, but it can also be pretty overwhelming at times. You know, where, how, where do you put your focus when you're a generalist? How do you know which story to pick? And, and, and that can be a little bit of a challenge there. But, and they also can write for any platform. A generalist can write for newspapers, magazines. They could write for their own blog. They could write for an online news source. They can write for, for anything. They're not specializing either in their topic or their platform usually. They can write on anything for anyone. And so they're sort of like the Swiss Army knife of journalists, right? They can do a lot of different things. And, and you know, the sacrifice is that you may not do any one of those particular things especially well or better than somebody who specializes in that, right? You can do that thing, but, but somebody who specializes in that area may have an advantage because they really know that topic and that, that world inside and out. But you have the freedom, the ability to step in anywhere and at any time and, and really do whatever you want, just like a Swiss Army knife, right? As opposed to a specialist uh, or somebody who has a niche who would write on a specific topic and or for a specific platform. So they don't have to do both. You could write on, uh, on a specific topic for all platforms, or maybe you could write on a specific topic but only in digital form or only for a newspaper or whatever or you could specialize in in a platform but uh, but they were they, they've narrowed it down they found their niche they're focusing on just politics or just science or just celebrities or whatever and they're really digging in and, and getting their tentacles in every part of that world to the exclusion of all others so you're not going to you know if you're if you're really hyper focused on one area you're not going to be reporting on if you're hyper focused on celebrities and, and celebrity gossip and what's going on in, in the world of entertainment and what the new movies are and stuff like that, then you're not just all of a sudden going to say one day, I think I'd like to report on, you know, the tensions in the Middle East or, you know, ten, you know what's going on in my local, local political thing. You, you, you could theoretically do that, but, but you're not going to be prepared to do that as much because you've invested everything in this one topic. So there's a trade off for both sides. Um, so. First of all, I guess, picking whether or not you want to be a generalist or a specialist is the first choice. But then if you pick a, a specialty and, and a niche, just be aware that you're going to be focused on that. Um, and so a, a, a specialist then becomes very, a very, you know, there's very specialized area. So I found this, uh, this uh, ad or whatever for this butter knife, which is what this picture is. This is a butter knife specifically. And you could see that, and some of the features that they highlight in the, in the um, advertisement are that it's bent at an angle. So that you can really uh, get into the the butter dish or the butter you know, slab there without having to uh, move the knife or worry about getting caught on the sides or anything. That's got that bent thing. Uh, when it is on the one side there, as you can see, it brings the butter up in curls, which I guess is supposed to be an advantage, make it easier to spread, according to this ad. And, and on the other side, actually, the one other feature they had was uh, uh, like a, a 
toast scraper so you can get some of the burnt edges off the toast and that's part of that knife as well but very specialized you're not going to use this knife for for whatever it's not going to do you much good if you're lost in the wilderness probably or as much good as a swiss army knife for example if you're lost in the woods or if you're trying to cut a steak or you're trying to do whatever this does one thing really well but it only does that one thing so again you have that trade-off between are you the swiss army knife in journalism or are you the specialized expensive butter knife the, the, not not just a butter knife. I don't even remember what they called it. It's not just a butter knife because that's what you find in your silverware drawer. But some specialized butter spreader tool. You know, uh, that's the decision some journalists have to make. What are you going to do? What are you going to focus on? And then and then what within that is going to be your specialty if you're going to choose that. Okay. So some pros, we kind of already touched on some of these, but pros of a niche, you can really find something that you're passionate about and focus on that. People don't just choose a niche out of a hat usually. They pick something to specialize in that is of interest to them. And so that allows you to really be passionate about something and pursue that passion and focus on that passion. So if there is something that you really care immensely about, that could be your niche. You could, I mean, that's a natural niche for you to, to, to follow as a journalist. It's something that you're passionate about, which can again, give you a little excitement about writing about these things and really give, give you a vested interest in the things that you're writing about. You, you can find areas of great potential. There's a lot of potential within these niches and, and some that are underrepresented, for example, um, that, that may be of interest either now or in the future. You can kind of build into that and, and catch something that's on the rise, so to speak. You can tap into that potential of a particular area. And there's a great deal of profit in these things. Your media is becoming much more specialized uh, over the last 20, 30 years. You don't have as many you know, just general news magazines, for example. You know, you have a couple still, but there aren't as many general news magazines and general newspapers and things. People don't want to get just one article every once in a while on their, you know, hot rod cars in a in a time magazine or something like that they they have a magazine and dozens of magazines probably specialized to that type of car and and you see that in magazines in particular you set in tv instead of three general networks that have to cover the whole breadth of information and and you try and pick pieces out of that that you're interested in now you have whole channels dedicated to one particular thing right and the same is true in journalism and, and that's where there's a, a great deal of opportunity for profit as well because these people who are interested in these things are willing to spend on these things. Right? They spend money on these things because they're passionate about them. So there's a, there's the opportunity uh, in picking a niche that you could find an area of profit if you can tap into something like that. So possibly even in, in an easier way than if you're a generalist. So there are those the, the passion, the potential, and the profit are some of the pros of finding a niche for journalism. Uh, on the flip side, there are some cons as well, right? So um, as we've talked about, having a niche narrows your scope. It really kind of locks you into that one area, that one specialization. And even if you have some other interests, you're really kind of uh, for, forced in a sense, not, not, not literally forced, but forced by momentum and forced by potential into this one area because you've invested so much time in this. You've already developed sources in these areas. You've developed credibility in these, in this specific area. So to step outside of that uh, would be to sacrifice some of that credibility in terms of you're not going to have the same credibility in different areas that you do in that one area that you, in which you've developed a niche. So it does kind of narrow your scope a little bit and and uh, and kind of lock you into that, that area of specialization to an extent. There's a danger of stagnation. There's a danger that you could get to the point where you feel like, I've reported on everything here that I have an interest in, that, or that I'm getting tired of telling stories about this one particular area. I still enjoy this area, but I'm getting tired of telling stories in this one area. So there's a danger of that. There's a danger that the audience could get tired of hearing from you on that particular topic and, and start looking for some different uh, sources on that one topic if they if they want to you know kind of venture outside a little bit there. So um, there's a danger of stagnation for you and for the audience. And there's also the, this idea that changing lanes is, is challenging. Like I said, this narrows your scope. It kind of locks you into this one thing. And then if you decide, you know, I'm kind of tired of reporting on science. I'd kind of like to get into local politics a little bit and, and see what's going on there. You can do so, but as I've said, you've got to develop all new, a whole new series of, of sources and a whole new series of, uh, of insights and, and, you know, get your tentacles really into that area. And it's a challenge. I mean, it's, it's kind of like starting over. So, so some people enjoy that challenge and other people are like, oh, it's a little bit overwhelming. Maybe I'll just stay here. So, you know, momentum is a powerful force. You can just kind of stay in your lane there and, and have whatever success you can. But so changing lanes, if you do decide you want to get into something else, can be challenging. 
uh, once you develop a niche. So again, pros and cons there. So how do you go about picking a niche? Okay. Well, these are from an article uh, called uh, Find Your Ideal Freelance Writing Niche. You can see the citation there. Uh, so they suggest these things in terms of picking a niche. First of all, identify your expertise. What is it that you know a lot about already? You know, wh where, where do you have some knowledge? That will give you a really big head start and, uh, and understanding that topic and being able, able to explain that topic. So what's your expertise right now? Identify your passion. I mentioned this before. What is something that you care about? That's going to come through in your writing. You don't want to pick something that, that you just grab out of a hat because then you're going to end up writing about something you don't care about and that's going to come through to the audience. So identify your passion. So what do you know a lot about and what are you passionate about and where are there opportunities? You have to look around. Uh, you, you know, if you're going to try and make a living as a journalist, writing about what you care about is great. Uh, but it's not going to help you. You know, you need a place to eat. You need a place to sleep. You need food, right? So uh, you, you you need all of those things. So you have to find a place where all of these all of these things intersect, right? That, where there's an opportunity for you to write about something and and make a living doing so. So you need to identify the cross section of these things. Okay, you need to look. Okay, here's my expertise. Here's what I'm passionate about, and here's a, a possibility of something that I that I may have an opportunity to make some money on that. Now, it may, may not be your number one area of expertise or your number one passion, but hopefully it's in your top five. And you can find some things where these intersect. And then in the middle there is where you're going to find your niche, right? And this Venn diagram, as you're probably familiar with, where those things cross over, where they intersect, is your niche. That's where you select from. These are things that I know about. These are things that I'm passionate about. And these are also things where I can get paid to write about these things and be involved in these things. So we need to find the place where those things intersect. Then you also need to identify, when you're picking a niche, you need to identify potential clients and build a knowledge base. You need to, to really dig into that world. Again, it's, it's you know not enough to just know about it now and be passionate about it and think there's an opportunity there. You've got to do the legwork in developing those clients and getting to know those clients and building that knowledge base, developing sources, developing connections, and developing an even more thorough understanding of whatever area it is that you're picking. Okay? As far as where we find stories, where do you find stories? The, 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 the simplest answer and the, the most honest answer, truthfully, is everywhere. You can find stories everywhere. Uh, so you can find stories in your own brain, just things that pop into your head, things that you're interested in, things that, that you know, keep a notepad next to you and write down things that you're interested in and story ideas that come into your own head. You can find stories on social media. What are people talking about? What do people care about? You know, what's going on in the world? You can find a connection there. You can find stories in the world around you, at the supermarket, at Walmart. What are people talking about there? What are people talking about at the local coffee shop, at the local Starbucks, right? What about at your local diner or Denny's or whatever? What's got people's attention there? And even just places like, you know, when people go to Little League games, they end up on these benches together, on these bleachers together. And so they talk. I mean, the game can't hold all of your interest, especially if they're younger kids. It's fun to watch, but people start chatting. Oh, did you hear about this? And, and what about those taxes and so forth? So... Just pay attention to the world around you. Stories are everywhere. So a little more specific tips for finding information and finding stories. You can rely on sources. And, and that doesn't mean just waiting for people to call you. But you can start contacting people. You can start developing sources and say, hey, what's going on here? Is there something we should be interested about? And, and is there something that the public should know in this area? You can start to cultivate some of those sources and develop some of those sources on your own and be in contact with them. You can look around. Uh, again, as I mentioned, you you walk around when you're at the when you're at the grocery store, when you're at the little league games, when you're at the coffee shop or the diner. What are people talking about? What has their interest? What is their concerns? You know, what are their concerns? And you know, how can we tap into that to give them some information that they might need and that they would find interesting? Curiosity. When things pop into your head, if if something is of interest to you, then there's possibly there's a pretty good chance it'll be of interest to somebody else too. So if you see something and say, well, how does that work? Or I wonder what the deal is with that. Somebody else has probably had that same thought. So you can follow that curiosity and try and find a story there. And you can find, again, the talk of the town. What are people talking about? I keep coming back to this, but it's true. People are talking about it because they're interested. So follow up on that. And finally, just some legwork. You know, when I worked in, in journalism, we, we would, every day we would stop by and maybe multiple times a day, stop by the local police station and say, can I see the information reports? What's going on? So you got to get out there and do the legwork yourself sometimes too and find those stories and just see what's going on in the world. If you have questions about this or anything else related to digital journalism, please feel free to email me. I'm always happy to respond to emails. And in the meantime, 
keep digging and find those stories.